Hello there. My name is Justin DeRose with Effective Remote Work, and today I wanted to walk you through how I'm using Notion as a planner. I'm a big proponent of using the tools that fit the situation that you're looking to solve or the problem that you're trying to solve. I've loved OmniFocus for a long time. It's a fantastic task management software, and there's other great tools that are out there as well. But the one thing that I was constantly getting hung up on in that particular tool was this mindset of, I have to put everything in there, goals, tasks, projects, thoughts, ideas, everything. And that has literally driven me nuts and thrown me off the rails with that tool for so long. This last spring, as I've talked about in my podcast process, if you followed along with that at all, I moved into the bullet journal for a period of time, then back into OmniFocus and applied some things that I had learned and then moved out of OmniFocus back into the bullet journal, but then started incorporating some planning routines inside of Notion. My reason for doing that was I realized I was having a really difficult time getting above the day-to-day. Sometimes we can get lost in the forest of the individual tasks and things and commitments that we have going on and forget to see what the bigger picture of life is and the plans that we have, the aims that we have, the goals that we have. And so today, what I wanted to do was talk through a little bit of how I've structured my planner inside of Notion. And then maybe you can pull some concepts from this that might be helpful for you, either inside of Notion or another tool or even on paper or whatever it is that might be beneficial or useful for you. Now, what you see on the screen here is the main page that I have for the year 2020. One of the things that I love to do is theme my year. If you've ever listened to Cortex, a podcast by Mike Hurley and CGP Gray, that's one thing they've talked quite a bit about recently is the concept of a yearly theme. As you can see here, the theme for this year is the year of stabilization. And with that, I have a few aims. One is to just basically get a little bit deeper into being calm and resting and just kind of taking a step back from things, to move more, and then to do more things with people because as a remote worker like I am, it can be a little difficult to have enough social time within the day or the week or whatever I need. Then below that you see I have some season plans and that's what we'll get into next. But largely I wanna have just this landing spot for the year. This place can show me what exactly I am focusing on and looking at and trying to keep my head around for the year. I'm not a big proponent of goals, and so that's why you see aims. These are just directions that I want to move, areas that I want to be intentional in. And then I can apply those aims to the seasons that I have that I'm planning and my day-to-day routines and habits. Here you can see I have a copy of my planning page. I've removed some of the sensitive information on here, but largely it's intact. At the top, I have my yearly theme, which is again, the year of stabilization, and then my desired outcomes for the season. Now, what's a season? A season for me is basically three months. It can be a little longer, it can be a little shorter than that, but largely it's three months. So the one that we're in right now in January 2020 is January to March. These are the outcomes that I have listed here that I would like to see motion on or completion of within that season. They're not necessarily goals. They're not necessarily outcomes or achievements that I have set. Some of them are, but they're really places that I want to spend my time investing over the next three or so months. When I have them listed out here, it gives me a much better frame of reference for making decisions about the projects that I'm gonna take on, how I'm spending my time, and gives me a way to look back and say, did I go in the direction that I wanted to? And then when I'm reviewing and planning my next season, I can make adjustments based off of that. Below that, I have my weekly plan. Some folks like Marie Poulin, and others are really big fans of using databases for this kind of stuff, but honestly, I just need a simple place where I can note down the things that I want to focus on and need to keep track of for the week. So this week plan is January 25th through 31st, and I will be honest, this is pretty close to what I have in my system right now, but it's a little bit messy, it's a little empty, and I'll get into why in a little bit. 
So the first thing here is my focus. This is my main outcome that I want to have for the week. I put do the things down here, honestly, because I just didn't really have clarity on what I wanted my outcome to be this week. So I just needed to keep moving in the areas that I needed to go. Below that, I have three columns that are split up into commitments, intentions, and habits. Commitments are my hard landscape items. These are things in the calendar that are appointments that I need to be at, things that I need to go to, all those types of things, things that I have to show up for, otherwise something in the system breaks. Or they can be things like publishing my latest episode of Process, which is a weekly commitment that I have. The middle column are intentions. Intentions are things that I have purposed myself to do, but they're not necessarily going to throw the whole system off if they're not completed. For example, I'm working on a migration of a form at work right now, and so I wanna make sure that I push that forward this week and try to wrap it up. I have some bugs and a plugin that I've worked on, and then I want to be intentional with the time that I'm spending with my family. Again, intentions don't have to be tasks to complete. They can be things that you wanna focus on, a mindset that you wanna have, or just things that you're aiming to be intentional on during the week. Having these things defined, and I usually define three to five of them, generally more towards three because it's easier to manage mentally, it tends to keep me on track and gives me a good win condition for the week. Then the last column here is habits. And the reason this is blank is because I've started migrating my habits into my bullet journal to try to keep track of them on a more regular basis. I used to list out one main habit that I wanted to keep track of here. Last season, it was exercise. And so I just had five check boxes to say, did I exercise for five days this week? And I could keep track of it there. I didn't keep longer term track of habits. But now I'm looking at trying to do that and build more longer term streaks and mindset changes through tracking habits in my paper notebook. This bottom part here, you can see I have project notes. In the past, when I wasn't using OmniFocus, which I'm back using again, I would have a section down here that was just a bunch of pages. And I'll actually jump over to my previous year, if I get in the right section here. We'll go to season four. And I can show you what that looks like. So down here, I have projects, my dreams page, which was a place where I kept ideas or projects I was stewing on for the future. And then I would have three sections of projects, which were active, queued, and completed. In these were pages that I had. And if I go into one of these here, so for example, build version zero of a RESTful productivity system, I was exploring some ideas of using a Zettelkasten and task management and the bullet journal and all sorts of fun stuff like that. I would keep to-dos in here as well as thoughts and reference materials as regard of that project. And what made it really nice is if I go back here is I could literally just drag this around. So if this project was active, I just put it under the active column. If it's something that I wanted to queue up, I would just put it under queued. If it's something that I completed, I'd put it over here. It made it really easy to see the status of things. I've got a system set up for that inside of OmniFocus now, which is really helpful. And I have some ways to keep track of reference materials and thoughts and ideas I have regarding projects inside of Notion, but that's a topic for another video. But this is one way you could potentially structure a weekly planning system. If you don't necessarily need a big task manager to handle those things, and you're using something like a bullet journal or something else that's simpler, if you do need to keep track of projects at a broader scale, using something like this might work. These are simply pages listed underneath of this season. And that's how I have that structured. It's really, really simple, but it worked really well for me. Now going back to my copy of my plan here, instead, I have a database view here that shows my active project notes. So I just have different things that I'm working on here. For example, my kid's birthday party is coming up. And so I have a page inside of there that shows me the things that need to happen with that, the thoughts that I need to process through what recipes I'm gonna use for baking a cake and all sorts of fun stuff like that. And that's how I tend to use these. And then I link these pages to the project inside of OmniFocus so that it's easy to switch back and forth in between of them. Then when I'm done with that project, I'll just click the archived button and then that'll put it into the archive, but it still keeps the notes right there. 
overall, having some kind of a planning setup like this for me has been extremely helpful, merely for the fact that it gives me a different context to do my planning in. The problem I run into when I'm trying to plan inside of my task manager or another tool that's a little bit more granular and focused more on the day to day is that I get too focused on the trees. I start to manage the individual things instead of looking at the big picture. So the benefit of using Notion for planning, for me anyway, is that it gives me a place where I can think of the big picture and that's the only thing I'm doing there. And it really does wonders on helping me stay on track and the things that I want to be intentional on in a given season. Well, I hope you found this video helpful. If you're looking for more discussion on this video or discussions about productivity tools, software, or remote work, head on over to our community at community.effectiveremotework.com. Otherwise, thanks for watching.